Hi Dark Case family, I just want to take a second to thank you all as I'm heading towards 100,000 subscribers. This channel has only been going for just over 6 months and I find your support just absolutely mind blowing. I just want you to know that I appreciate all of you and the community we have built around this channel is just absolutely amazing. But that's enough from me, here is today's case. This case features a backyard burial, the ultimate betrayal and many things that should just never happen. Family for most people is a place of safety, an unspoken agreement of trust and respect, knowing that whatever happens you'll have each other's backs. You'd do anything for them and they'd do anything for you. But sometimes an outside influence can flip everything on its head. This is the enraging case of Rosemary Theron. Viewer discretion is advised for this educational documentary. Welcome or welcome back to Dark Case Documentaries. I bring you true crime, disturbing stories and other things that you may later regret knowing with regular uploads every week. Please do join the quickly growing, incredibly supportive Dark Case family by hitting subscribe now and turning on notifications. Remember, choosing to be kind can save a life in many ways. Thank you so much for choosing to be here with me. Our love and respect goes out to those that knew and loved Rosemary and all those affected by this case. 39 year old Rosemary Theron was a free spirit who thrived in Cape Town, South Africa. She was an entertainer and lover of all things creative, joyfully spending her days plastering smiles on faces through her work as a clown, stilt walker and face painter. Her family members and those that knew her described her as an ethereal beauty, a flower child who loved to make children laugh. She had an amazing and close relationship with both her mother Denise and her sister Angelique. Angelique knew her affectionately as Rosie. She called her a beautiful soul that was one with mother nature. Richard Crack, a close friend of Rosemary, described her as an unconventional and creative person who enjoyed making puppets. One year she made a life-size horse puppet for the Cape Town Carnival. Rosemary was also the proud mother of two daughters and one son, 8 year old Shariel, 18 year old Phoenix and 14 year old Taki. Even when she took the time to use social media, Rosemary expressed her love and pride in who her kids were and what they did for her on Facebook. She posted songs they wrote and activities in which they participated. She truly loved life, calling herself Rosemary Lovemore Theron. Everyone in her life knew her as a free loving spirit who, although flawed, always did her best to be light in a dark world. There were, however, long periods of time where Rosemary would seemingly abandon her children, going on trips and living out her nomadic, carefree dreams. However, this life didn't transfer well onto her three children. The children would often be present during wild parties, parties where less than desirable members of society would attend. This was beyond believing that societal norms weren't the way to live. This was a choice that actually endangered her children. Sadly, on at least two occasions, Phoenix suffered violations of an intimate nature at the hands of adult males. Arguably, this was as a direct result of Rosemary's lifestyle choices. Whereas Rosemary may have been living the dream, Phoenix at times was living a nightmare. Cape Town is an extremely populous city and the legislative capital of South Africa. This means it is a place full of life, culture and entertainment that Rosemary Rosemary loved so dearly, but it also had its problems. It was a seemingly ordinary day on March the 7th, 2013 in Cape Town. Rosemary was going about her day as anything but a normal mum. She had recently sent her son Taki to live in Chile where he could build a relationship with his father. In her son's absence, Rosemary took care of her 8 year old daughter as well as another young family relative. It was well known what Rosemary's thoughts were on traditional societal conventions, school being one of 
of them. Rosemary did not believe in the value of traditional schooling. She thought that homeschooling was a much better alternative for parents to nurture their children. This meant that both her younger daughter as well as the relative that Rosemary cared for were not enrolled in a traditional school. Rosemary's older daughter, 18-year-old Phoenix, did not hold the same belief as her mother. Phoenix thought that traditional public school was not only acceptable but had a positive impact on children, that it set them up for a successful future. Phoenix wrestled with the fact that her younger family members were not going to school. She talked with her boyfriend at the time, Kyle Maspero, about her concerns with the younger children. This included the fact that they were not going to school. The two decided that it was now time that they discuss their thoughts on the matter with Rosemary. Daughter Phoenix and her boyfriend Kyle confronted Rosemary with their thoughts and concerns about the children's lack of schooling. This started a small argument. Although the two argued back and forth, it wasn't a particularly explosive discussion, but it also wasn't the calmest. Even so, people say things they don't mean in a heated discussion, which is predictably what occurred in this situation. Rosemary criticised Phoenix for not contributing financially to the home, while Kyle criticised Rosemary for her parenting skills. The argument ended with all three parties agreeing to disagree, generally frustrated with the entire conversation. Rosemary left for a work day filled with the things that she loved to do with the hopes of smoothing things over when she returned home. However, Rosemary would never have that opportunity. She strangely went missing. It was common for Rosemary to take spontaneous last minute trips with her friends, so her absence wasn't totally unusual but something wasn't quite right. It was possible that the heated debate that she had with her daughter motivated her to take some time alone, time to clear her head and devise a plan to move forward with her family. She did actually trust Phoenix to take care of the young children that lived in the house and most thought that this situation was no different, and that she'd left her daughter once again to take care of things. However, things would soon escalate. Rosemary failed to turn up for her daughter's ninth birthday on March the 11th. This sparked concern in the minds of both her family and her friends. Rosemary was reported missing to the Fishhook Police, where a search was immediately launched. It had now been a week since she was last seen, so they needed to work quickly. The police questioned everyone that Rosemary knew, including her daughters. Phoenix had told the police that it was normal for her mother to leave for a week or so at a time, explaining that she hadn't thought anything of it when her mother got into a car that Phoenix did not recognise. This was something that happened all the time. Phoenix had no idea that she should have taken note of who her mother was with or where she was going. Her absence seemed a little less alarming due to the fact that Rosemary had reached out to her friends the day after she left in the mysterious vehicle. However, after this, her phone was switched off. Phoenix said she had no idea that the man her mother left with could have been dangerous. The search continued for months with no leads to be found. People tried everything they knew to find her. They held meetings, called renowned detectives and posted information and asked for help on social media. They put up posters, spent countless hours spreading the word and searching for any scrap of news. A Facebook page was started in her name where people could post encouragement or any updates of which they knew. They called her an angel, talking about how much they missed her and how they wished that she would be home safely soon. Phoenix contributed to this as well, talking about how she was doing her best to take care of her younger sister in her mother's absence, and how she was missing her every day. Rosemary's mother, Denise, couldn't handle the pain of not knowing the whereabouts of her daughter. As Rosemary's uncle cared for her, he reported how she went from cheerful and happy to extremely depressed. Both her mental and physical health declined as the days went on without her daughter. She lost her leg due to poor circulation, with Rosemary's uncle describing how Denise's mind no longer had the will to fight. As the days and months went by, speculation grew about who could have taken Rosemary from her family. They wondered if it was one of her exes or one of the 
fathers of her three children. Rosemary's three children each had different fathers and two of them struggled with illicit substance issues. It was possible that one of them had taken her in an inebriated rage. Some people believed that she had gotten into the car under false pretenses, fearing that she had been a victim of human trafficking. Although there was no merit to any of these theories, friends and family were trying their best to make sense of a situation that confused them so deeply. Can you imagine being in a similar situation? I can really just imagine finding any way to make this make sense. The realisation began to set in that she was likely not returning. Six months since her disappearance was marked on the calendars of her loved ones. It wasn't until September the 29th, 2013 that they would find finally be an update in the case. On the beach of Strandfontein Pavilion, a beautiful resort for vacations and surfing, a body was discovered. Upon further investigation, despite the decomposition, Rosemary Theron was identified as a woman in the shallow and sandy grave. A fog of shock and sadness was cast over the friends and family of the woman that they lovingly knew as Rosie. The shock only became more intense as people found out more about the situation and condition that Rosemary was discovered in. Godfrey Sheepers, a friend of Phoenix and boyfriend Kyle, walked into the Fishhook police station on the day of Rosemary's discovery. He detailed to the police about how Kyle had spoken to him. He talked about how he, Phoenix and her younger sister, sister wanted to move out of Rosemary's house. Godfrey had offered up his home as a place for them to stay just for a temporary period of time until they made other plans. With this plan in mind, Kyle had called Godfrey to ask him to come over and help him move some of their belongings over to his house. Godfrey told the police that when he arrived to help Kyle and Phoenix move their things, they had expected him to help move more than he had bargained for. He revealed to the police that they also needed help moving Moving Rosemary's body from the garden to another location. Even though he claimed he was taken aback by the request, he did actually help them transport Rosemary's body from the garden of her own home to the shallow grave on the beach in Strandfontein. Then, a week ago, Godfrey Skippers walked into the Fishhook police station and confessed, leading the police to Tehran's decomposing body along Baden Powell Drive near the Strandfontein Pavilion. This was enough for police to arrest Phoenix and Kyle. And the true story of what happened on March the 7th became increasingly clear. After the argument between Phoenix, Kyle and Rosemary, the couple had hatched a plan to permanently remove Rosemary from the picture. Kyle had a lengthy history of fostering care homes, illicit substances and behavioural issues. Rosemary had made it known of her disapproval of Phoenix and Kyle's relationship, with the fear that Kyle would get Phoenix hooked on illicit substances too. This concern would, sadly yet quite predictably, prove to be true. After both partaking in said substances, Phoenix and Kyle put their twisted plan into motion. On that day, Rosemary actually did arrive back home after work. When she did arrive, Phoenix went to her and talked about the fight they had earlier that day. She hugged her mother, apologising for the disagreement. This hug between a mother and daughter was purely a smokescreen to position Rosemary for the rest of the plan. Kyle snuck up behind her with a rope in his hand. He then used the rope to stop Rosemary breathing. He counted out loud until four minutes had passed. Once Rosemary had taken her final breath, the two had wrapped her in a pink blanket, burying her quickly in the garden. They knew that this was not a permanent solution and that she would have to be moved later. And that is where Godfrey's story began. It was in this house that Kyle Maspero allegedly strangled Rosemary Tehran with the help of her own daughter, Phoenix, but it's up to the courts to get to the bottom of what actually happened that terrible night. Barbara Friedman, Cape Town. The trial began on Friday, April the 11th, 2014 and proved to be gruelling for everyone involved. Although Phoenix was a participant in the attack, Kyle was the one who had technically carried out the horrifying deed. Phoenix expressed serious remorse in her actions. She took a plea bargain where she pled guilty to her crimes and received just a 15-year prison sentence. Family members of Phoenix were in complete disbelief with her father reporting, how do I come 
come to terms with this, this daughter that I adored and thought was the sweetest little girl in the world. Rosemary had previously detailed that she wanted her ashes to be placed in an organic urn, an urn where avocado seeds would be planted. She wanted to eventually be grown and transferred to a place where the poor could be fed, her legacy living on forever through good deeds. Angelique, Rosemary's sister, couldn't handle the tragedy that was unfolding around her. Two weeks after Rosemary's funeral, she sadly took her own life. Friends of Rosemary say that the demise of both Denise and Angelique is also on the hands of Phoenix and Kyle. Kyle's case was a more complex one. He was only 17 years old at the time of the attack on Rosemary. He was given a psychiatric evaluation. This was due to questions about how his illicit substance abuse might have affected his brain function. This delayed the trial for many months. The family and friends of Rosemary were tortured as the case dragged on without closure. A year and a half after the discovery of Rosemary's body, Kyle's trial had finally begun on October the 4th, 2015. Kyle was now 20 years old. Although he pleaded guilty to his hand in the ending of Rosemary, there were still ongoing arguments about his sentencing. Due to his age at the time, his defence asked for a light sentence. However, friends, family and prosecution strongly disagreed and pushed for him to be tried fully as an adult. The prosecution detailed how Kyle had not yet shown remorse for what he had done to Rosemary Theron, saying this was enough to give him the highest sentence possible. However, his age at the time of the event played to his advantage. Kyle broke down in the courtroom as he was given a sentence of just 13 years behind bars. The family was outraged by the short amount of time that was given. Do you think the punishments fit the crime here? What do you think could be done to avoid something like this happening again? Let me know down in the comments. And please do hit like if you appreciate what I'm doing here. Thank you to everyone in the Dark Case crew. You too can become a channel member for just 99p. A huge thank you to my patrons. Your support makes a huge difference. You too can support my work and be thanked in every video for just $5 per month. So a massive thank you to Rachel David, Kathy Green, David James, Addy Alexander, Karen Jones, L. Palmieri, James Harrington, Shane Wood, Woodward, Faster River, Stacey Crogerus, Summer Chambers, Mona Corona, Cepheid Variable, Anthony Watson, Jason Coward, Guardian Paler, Jeremy Sebrenek, Joy Burton, Dawn Croc, Michelle Mims, and Darlene. Be careful out there, and I'll see you soon.